so we're both super excited to see the postman today. We've got some stick insects. Now these are giant prickly stick insects and also known as Maclay Spectre. These are nice little pets and very friendly, completely harmless to humans. The scientific name for these is Ecstatosoma tiratum. Stickles! Shh. It's amazing that they come in the post in these little boxes and inside the box they prepare them with some food stems kept in foil with water in to keep the food fresh they're just eating bramble which is mature bramble um, very easy to keep these pets and inside the container is enough oxygen for a few days you'll see some black spots in there that's just poop let's see how many we've got whoa there's three in here we've got five we've got six. Uh oh no we haven't one, two, three, four, four in there, four in there. We've got eight. Well, I think we've ordered six, so I'm hoping uh -oh. there's a total of six in there. Six, three female and three male. There's three in here. There's three in here. So these guys, as I said, they're completely harmless to humans. They just eat leaves, you know, very easy to keep. They eat blackberry, raspberry, oak, rose, hazel, and eucalyptus. Um, in the winter, you can still find blackberry leaves outside. Just be careful if you're getting leaves from a store, make sure they've not got any insecticide on. Insecticide really will kill these guys off. So we'll show you what they look like inside the delivery boxes. Now we're going to put them in the enclosure soon and you'll see there the leaves, a bit of water on the leaf there that's, that's come out. They do drink the water from the leaves so what you tend to do is spray the leaves with a, a spray twice a day and as they eat the leaves they'll get the moisture from the leaves. They'll even suck the water from the leaves. They don't need a massive amount of water because they are from Australia, a very dry part of the world, but they do drink when they want to. You can see this one here moving around and shaking. They try and mimic uh, a leaf or a piece of twig blowing in the wind. But on the whole, very peaceful, uh, very relaxed creatures. Interesting pets. Certainly um, similar resemblance to a scorpion. And you'll see the tail there can curl up to mimic a scorpion. They can even put their legs forward like a scorpion. And this is a tactic to scare away predators. As I said, they are completely harmless and they do have some strange kind of mouths, but they're just designed to eat leaves. This one here is having a little go at this leaf now, shaving a few strips off the leaf as it goes. Did you see it? It's pretty and it's cute. So we've ordered another six here today. We've got three females and three males. And interestingly, the females are bigger than the males. They become quite bulky. They grow up to about 15 centimeters long, so they do get quite big. You need a good size enclosure for them. And the males are about 12 to 13 centimeters long, so they're still a good size, but not as big as the females. Now, the females do have very small wings, but they're not able to fly because of their bulk. And they're a bit more spiny. They have more prickles on. Um, whereas the males are a bit more slender. We'll look at the males in a moment. I do think, looking at these creatures, I'm fascinated by them, but I do think that it reminds me of the alien from H.R. Geiger. I wonder if he was inspired by these wonderful creatures. The towel of these, at the very tip of the towel, the eggs pop out, much like the film Aliens. So interesting that um, the artwork and the, the design of the motion picture could well have been inspired by these giant prickly stick insects. Stickles. Shh. 
So as I say, the males do have wings. Um, as they get older, they form quite long, slender wings, and they have a slender body. Now, the interesting thing with the males is they can actually fly around the room if you're not careful. So if you get the males out when they're matured, make sure you've got your windows shut, or make sure you know where they are because they could well escape and you'll never see them again. And speaking of the enclosure, one of the most common causes of death of these pets is too much humidity. They do require a very ventilated, open, I'm gonna say enclosure, because you can't keep them in a tank. You need a mesh walled vivarium or equivalent type of enclosure for them so they can get plenty of fresh breeze, plenty of oxygen. If you're in doubt initially, I would just keep them on a plant in the house because at least they're gonna be safe. They honestly, in a, an enclosed plastic container, very, very quickly they would would die and succumb to the fact that they haven't got enough airflow. So you really need to have a breezy environment for them. Now, some breeders put small fans on them and if ever they seem quite still or, or not moving, you just blow on them and they'll just spring into life and they'll start moving around. I'm not quite sure why that is. I assume in the in the in nature, the wind would encourage them to move and take shelter, stay out of direct sunlight. Which is another thing to mention. If you do get these pets, do not leave them in direct sunlight for very long. They're from a very hot country, but they are designed to be kept quite shaded, so they will tend to crawl out of sunlight. But if they haven't got the opportunity to do so, sunlight would quickly bring their body heat up and, and kill them as well. So as these guys are quite young, it's hard to, I suppose it's hard to point out to you which ones are the males and which ones are the females, but within a number of days they will begin to molt, which is where they shed their skin, and they will get bigger very, very quickly. Then it will be easy to distinguish between the male and female because the females will have large spiny legs and tails, and the males will become more slender with far less spines and prickles on them. I mentioned earlier that they lay eggs, and the females lay eggs. Even if they're not fertilized by the males, they'll lay eggs on their own. And the eggs take a very long time to hatch, four, six, even nine months. The longer ones, because they haven't been fertilized, and they're clone eggs of the female, but the six months ones will have been fertilized. And you can actually hatch the eggs yourself. I think the easiest method is to use a small Tupperware container with some kitchen roll in, and you moisten the kitchen roll and you place the eggs on the kitchen roll and as soon as the eggs dry out you moisten them again checking for mold if mold forms on the eggs you wipe it off and you just keep rinse and repeat and over time eventually you'll have these little baby ant type nymphs that will be crawling around in the container not much more to say as I said, very friendly, you can sit with them on your hand. They're quite placid, quite chilled. Nice little pets, interesting, fascinating creatures. Looking at this one again, this is very slender and less spikes on it. I would say that's a male, just looking at it there, and it gives you an idea of the differences. The females you'll have seen earlier were very prickly and very spiky. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope it's been interesting. I'll see how this is received. I mean, I, I'm quite passionate about these small creatures if you guys want more videos of these i've got some habitats to show you some different um, types of stick insects a fully grown one if i get some likes some subs and lots of views i'll certainly do more videos for you and i'll share as much knowledge as i can with you as we go thanks for watching please please subscribe if you can it really helps us out um, the more subscribers we get the more prominent we get on youtube and the more our videos get shared around and thank you very much for spending the time to watch this. Perhaps you'll leave a comment for me.